Welcome to episode 20 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 16th of July and it's absolutely horrible and dreary outside. It's not that cold but it's just so wet and horrible so it's a good time to do some crafting. <laughs> so I'm drinking a cup of tea out of my mug that I haven't broken. Those of you who've watched since Christmas I got bought this for Christmas and it's made of glass and I actually haven't broken it yet. <laughs> It might even make it till next Christmas, you never know. <laughs> I'm drinking rose lemonade um, from Taylor's. It's a really lovely tea. I like to leave the tea bag in to get it nice and strong. It tastes a bit like um, Turkish Delight. <laughs> so if you like that, you'll like this tea. So I've got some knitting and some sewing and some bobbin lace to show you today, as well as the usual and gadget um, and I'm going to do a little mini tour of my stuff in the background because Silver, Sylvia asked me, um, I can't remember what means it was, it might be on the Ravelry group I think, um, as to what was behind me. Oh it might, it was on the Ask Me Anything thread <laughs> and I've also got a few Ask Me Anything questions at the end as well. So I shall get started with the knitting section. First of all I've got a finished object which is lovely. So last time I just started these socks, I think I think I just started them. I may well have not started them, I can't remember. My main memories go in these days. <laughs> so these are the ankle socks with ventilation by Luli. And they've got a nice one by one rib at the top uh, with this gorgeous ventilation pattern. Absolutely, I'm in love with this pattern. It is gorgeous. It absolutely flew by. Once I've done that, um, the cuff bit, absolutely zoomed past on the foot. Absolutely love this pattern. Can I say absolutely love it anymore? <laughs> so I've done two, I've tried to get them exactly the same. I haven't blocked these yet, I've just popped them on the sock blockers. Um, and the yarn I've used is Serenity Sock Weight. And this is a Den Deborah Norval that I've got. I got it from America when I went there to Florida. And that was really, that's a, a lovely little thing that I've used up already. <laughs> I've got to, if I'm going to spend all this money on yarn when I go away, I must actually use it. <laughs> so those, I absolutely love these. I'm going to knit Adam a pair um, in some sort of manly blue colours probably. Because <laughs> he was like, I want some of those. I want holes, ventilation holes. <laughs> So that'll be good for him. I'm not sure what yarn I'm going to use yet, but I really do love this pattern. So I was knitting these for the knit along that I've been doing for the summer sock along that loads of you have joined in. Um, on the last podcast, I think I said that I'd just do it for July, but because so many of you are in, so interested and the amount of prizes I've got available, it's going to run till the end of August. So if you haven't started yet, you've still got plenty of time to join in. It'll end at the end of August and then I'll draw, draw for prizes at the beginning of September. So you've got absolutely plenty of time and it's so much fun doing these little shorty socks. So any socks that are sort of this sort of height or shorter um, are eligible for prizes. Um, of course, if you if you just want to come and join in the chat, that's fine. You don't have to put your finished objects in the finished objects thread. Um, but it'll be lovely to see what you've got to say and what yarns you might fancy using. It's great fun. This pattern I would really recommend. Um, it's by Luli. I can't remember if I said it was by Luli. It's all really. <laughs> um, but it's part of her sock collection that she's got, which comes with um, some ribbed socks and some lacy socks, which I've showed you previously on the podcast. Um, really nice, useful set of socks. Um, I'm going to be knitting um, all of those patterns, I think, as time goes on. I've knitted the lacy ones already and these ones, the ankle socks with ventilation and I'm sure I will be surely doing the ribbed ones as well soon. Adam loves ribbed socks, he likes how they sort of cling to his leg for some reason. They actually take a lot more effort though don't they? <laughs> so we'll have to get some special ones for Christmas. <laughs> I will stop waffling on. So what I actually had about eight grams left of this yarn. Um, I had to to um, ball some up just so that I could come to the same point in the yarn so that they'd match. Um, so I've got about eight grams left which I can pop in my cosy memories blanket which will be lovely. So that's the first finished object. Um, I shall go on to my 
works in progress. I've got a half finished object and I'm just going to slip it onto the sock blocker here. <laughs> these socks are slightly big for these sock blockers. I need to get myself some large ones because my leg is a little bit um, larger than the medium sized sock blockers. So you'd seen that, um, on the last episode I started these, I think I've got to about there. Um, these are knitted with knit picks and it's their, oh, I've forgotten what it's called absolutely rubbish, disorganised. It's Knit Picks for Leech Sheet in the bubble colourway. So it's that one just there. And here's what it looks like. So the pattern I chose to use, because I wanted to show the stripes on the heel, I've picked up the Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson. And I've had the pattern here somewhere to show you. I'm sure you've all done these before. Sorry it's in black and white, but it's the Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson. Um, I did actually cast on the cuff with my own normal 2x2 two two rib um, in the, my normal stitch count that I use. Um, but of course I did the heel uh, the same way as Susan that is designed in the pattern. And I'm really pleased about that. Um, the one thing that annoys me about this yarn, let me see if I can find it, there's a little bit there, there's little bits of different colours in the stripes, which is a bit of pink there, in the blue section, which is very annoying. <laughs> Has anybody had this problem with Knit Picks for Leechy before? I've never actually knit with it, I've bought quite a few balls of it, but not actually um, knit with it yet. I must admit it's not uh, it's not in regular points, but there are a couple of bits where the pink has come through on the different colours. Um, but I still really like them. I love this colourway. Beautiful, bright socks. Um, so I finished number one. Lovely. <laughs> and I have started sock number two. And I've just done my normal 2x2 two two rib and just got a little way down on the normal stocking stitch. And because they are regular, just plain stocking stitch, they are flying so fast. I think I've knitted quite a few pattern socks recently and I've kind of forgotten just how quickly it goes when you're just doing stocking stitch. So I'm looking forward to seeing those finished. And the, look at that, colours in the ball. Absolutely lovely. So that's the bubble colourway by Knit Picks Felici. And that's my sort of half finished object. And I've got a few um, of other things that I've been working on the needles. So those of you who watch me on Instagram will have seen this hat that I've been working on. And this is a brioche pattern. And I've forgotten what the pattern's called, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm gonna have to rip it back because I've made a mistake in the brioche. It's just because I've been trying to knit this when I've been chatting away. And it isn't that difficult. It's just, I'm too busy nattering. <laughs> So I'm going to have to rip this back, there's a mistake on this side. Those of you that have done this pattern might be able to see what I've done there. But I think that as I continue, if I just left it, I'd have issues with um, the pattern further up. So I'm just going to undo it again. I'll probably take it back to nearly where the, just the plain bit is at the bottom. But I really love brioche, it is really um, enjoyable to knit with. Just don't talk too much when I'm knitting it. <laughs> So this yarn is also Knit Picks. Uh, this is, uh, I've got the ball bands here. How I forget these, forget what these are between knitting them, I don't know. <laughs> so this is the Swish DK and I've got two colourways and this one's Wonderland Heather. Um, I can't remember which way round they were. And the other one's called Marbled Heather. So Wonderland Heather and Marbled Heather are the two colours I've chosen, but I can't remember which way round they are, I'm afraid. And here is the pattern. And I've got it open to the page that I'm knitting it on, so I'll have to just find the front. There we go, there's a picture of the finished hat. And I can't remember what the pattern's called. <laughs> it's the Liguria, and it's by... Catherine Schubert. So that's how it's spelt, Liguria. I'm probably pronouncing it very incorrectly, but it is a lovely pattern. I'm just too talkative. <laughs> so I will be finishing those off. I hopefully are well, those. I will be finishing that hat next, I think. I just got a little bit annoyed when I'd done it wrong. So I have to put it to one side for a little while until I've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> Any of you guys like that? But obviously I'm enjoying um, knitting with the Knit Picks 
sort of wee yarns, apart from the fact that, that the stripes have different colours in them. But the actual plain yarns are really lovely, really lovely and soft. I better put that in that bag, otherwise I'll completely lose it. I've got a mass of knitting on here, which is going to get completely uh, lost. So I've also been working on my shawl, my gainham shawl. Now I cast this on absolutely ages ago and I've started knitting on it again because I finished my dyeing of the light shawl. And I wanted to finish that because I was doing it as part of the knit along that Ruth was doing over at the um, Knitterarium um, Ravelry group. I've just got a bit tangled here. Oh, it's only across the back, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see where the little cauldron stitch marker is that's where I was the last time I showed this to you so I have done quite a bit there and I also bought some new needles which I'll talk a little bit more about in the next um, in the end section with confessions so I'd bought these to test out on the last uh, episode and I'll sp I won't say any more you can understand <laughs> you'll probably guess what I've done <laughs> anyway so this yarn is in the Bobby Blue colourway, and I've completely forgotten what the flipping yarn's called, because I'm a numpty. <laughs> oh, can I remember? Malabry Go Lace in the Bobby Blue colourway. There we go. I, I will double check that and put it down below if I've said it incorrectly. I've completely lost the ball band for some reason. I normally keep them in the bag with my, with my project. But as you can see, this texture is really gorgeous. And this yarn, it's a singles yarn and it's super, super soft. It's made of merino wool. And I love this colour. So that's going to be a real staple for my wardrobe once it's finished. I'm nearly halfway down the main pattern bit, but I've got to pick stitches up at the bottom. As you can see, I've got a provincial cast on. So I've got a bit of extra to do. But that... Um, that's quite a nice little um, knit to hopefully get a lot further in by the next episode. I've got one more work in progress. I've been so enjoying knitting this. I actually had to force myself to stop because I loved the fact that it was in a square. <laughs> there we go. I've got an actual square shaped. It's like a proper blanket now. <laughs> So I've been working on this top row and I'd got up to here on the last podcast and I've done two squares. Now this one, it was it was a Nora George in the Ravenclaw colourway and that's really pretty blue and yellow and this was given to me in a swap by Kelly and Kelly also sent this one as well. I think that this is Elm Tree Yarns in the Georgian collection, but because I've switched, I've, I've messed around the little tags she sent me, I can't be 100% sure, um, but it is really lovely and it's got a sparkle in it. I don't think you can really see the sparkle on camera, but that's really pretty. So what I've been trying to do on most of my blanket is to do sort of a checkerboard of dark and light colours. Um, so that it kind of mix them up a bit so that I don't end up with patches of all dark colours and patches of all light colours so I can actually fold it up so cute so I don't know if I actually I didn't mention that this little progress keeper I've been using is one of my Chapelfield Crafts progress keepers and this is the gorgeous millionaire shortbread mm. it's one of my favourite desserts <laughs> Right, so those are my knits in, knits in pro, yeah, works in progress, I should say. I think it's time for a drink. Right, so that's my works in progress for my knitting, and I'm going to move on to sewing. So I've done a variety of bits and bobs of sewing this time. So the first thing that I've actually finished is a cushion cover. Now, there's no there's no actual pad in this, it's like a mini cushion cover that I've not um, actually put the pad in yet. Um, it's got like a hessian material on the back with a strip of little patchwork pieces 
um, that I've put in for, that I had left over from the front. So these are all Liberty prints and I had this as a kit from my lovely friend Mary um, for the wedding which was really lovely so I've, I've, I thought I'd make it up and it can go in our conservatory. So it's got little patches of Liberty print and now I've just quilted across the front there and then I just need to now get a cop a a cotton pad, a cushion pad to go inside. So I'm really pleased about that. I think this one here is my favourite of the Liberty prints in this this cover. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to have to see if I can get some more of this so I can make myself a top out of that. That's absolutely gorgeous. I'm saying absolutely gorgeous rather a lot today. So I should tell you where you can get these kits from. So this is the card that came with it and it's from Kim Porter uh, fabrics uh, that are worn and washed so I think that there's a there's a, a little dress on the bottom there if you can't see it very much I'll put it on the screen as well as a print so she's she puts a little kit of the little squares with it I'm not quite sure uh, where Mary got hold of this but I'm sure if you looked on the website you might be able to get one too now I'm going to go on to my a little bit of patchwork so those of you who've been watching for a little while would may have seen this before I did a workshop with Lynn Edwards where you did this kind of turn and sew um, method uh, where I've added a little bit on the outside but I think it's the outside ones are easy to explain so I've got a triangle of fabric here which I've pulled back on itself and then stitched down so that you get a curved edge um, and what I've done is I've I only I had only done the square in this, oh, I can't point, <laughs> just up to here um, and then I've added these bits on the corners and these triangles on the edges to put it on point so I can make it into a wall hanging. And if I put that up close to you, you might be able to see where it's folded over a little bit better. There we go. It's really difficult to show you big things. <laughs> so that's that is sort of finished in terms of it's the tops finished but I'm going to um, layer it up and give it a quilt I think I was thinking of doing some free motion uh, vermicelli stitchery in the centre there and do a little bit less dense um, quilting on the rest of the piece but that's going to be a wall hanging I think I couldn't decide whether I was going to make it into a cushion cover before but I think a wall hanging might be the best idea I really like this batik fabric it's so pretty. I've got a little bit extra left, so I might make myself a project bag out of that. <laughs> so I really like that. So hopefully you'll see a bit more progress on that next time. I'm trying to sort of finish older projects that I've started, because there's no point in keep starting new ones. So I'm getting a bit buried underneath here. <laughs> I'd also did a little workshop with Linda Turner who had taught us how to use those Markle paint sticks. So I'd done a sort of background where I'd done these green um, silhouette lines with the paint sticks and I've just started to do some stitching on there. I've done a little sheep and some grass and a tree and I've just um, stitched over the horizon line there. I'm going to I'm going to do some more stitching on these sort of hilly areas. Um, I'm not sure, just see how see how I feel when I'm when I'm stitching it. <laughs> so that's quite fun. I especially like the little sheep at the front there. He's quite cute. <laughs> There's probably bits of fluff all over this as well. So I've just um, put it on some wadding and been stitching it through the wadding and the um, piece of fabric on the front. So hopefully I'll show you some progress on that next week as well. Um, and now onto some cross stitch. So what have I done with it? It's underneath this pile somewhere. Ah, oh, it's underneath my socks. <laughs> right, so I was showing you this on the last episode that I'd started this sampler. I think it was two episodes ago that I actually showed it to you. I've done a little bit more on it. You can see where my hoop's been. <laughs> I finished the flowers on the centerpiece. So before I think I'd done up to there and I finished all the other flowers. Um, 
I wanted to do a little bit more but I find that stitching these quite small cross stitches I can't really do them in the evenings because my eyes are a bit tired but I really love how it's coming out and I love how this is a sort of tan colour rather than just plain white so that's great fun and if you haven't watched before this is a needle keeper I got from uh, Chapel View Crafts on Etsy and that is so useful to keep where keep an eye on where your needle actually is instead of dropping it on the floor like I normally do <laughs> so I'm so pleased that I got that um, so that's my progress on my little bit of cross stitch I'm hoping I think to do I don't know if you can be able to see this but there's some little dogs or some sort of animal either side of the floor of the flowery bit I've just done so I'm thinking of doing that bit next but you never know I might change my mind so that's my cross stitch for this week. I've done loads of little bits and bobs, haven't I? It's crazy. I've also been doing some bobbin lace. Now I've just got to lean over to grab my cushion. It's quite heavy. <laughs> I don't think this is ideal trying to show you on the camera, but never mind. Um, you can see there, oh, at least I can rest it on the table. <laughs> um, this is going to be a doily shape and this is just part of it. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it very well because I've got lots of pins in it still. Once I start, because um, I've basically run out of pins now, once I start taking some from the centre here when I'm moving forward, uh, you'll be able to see the detail more. Um, let's see if I can get it a bit closer. There we go. So that's going to be in a circle all the way around. And I'm using a... Finca 50 weight cotton in the white for the centre part and then I've got an 80 weight um, I, th I think it's called Dantille or something or other I'll write it just below <laughs> in the pink sort of colour and that's an 80 weight but that's the DMC make so it's slightly different weights and you can see all my bobbins are hanging off but they're, they're safe because I've got some um, stitch keepers underneath holding them all together in the right order because we wouldn't want to lose them where I was that would be absolutely horrendous <laughs> I'd just start again I think there we go that cushion has got um, it's got straw basically stuffed into it as so it was compact as possible so it's really really heavy so that's all my sort of sewing and bobbin lace sort of things now I'm talking about a blast from the past now the lovely Georgina was asking me if I'd done any the Tilly and the Buttons patterns and I have actually completed two I've done the I can't remember, the Matilda blouse, that's it, and I've also done the cocoa top. Now, I haven't got the Matilda blouse because I left it at my parents' house, who lives 200 miles away. <laughs> but I do have the cocoa top that I uh, made quite a while ago, and I will show you now. With the magic of technology, I will bring Barbara into the room. Ta-da! So here's Barbara wearing my cocoa top. Um... So the cocoa top is designed to be made with uh, stretch fabric and I did use stretch fabric but I decided that I needed to do a bust adjustment. One, because I wanted to practice and two, I didn't really realise that you could get away with not doing a bust adjustment when you're doing the stretch fabrics. Um, so as you can see here, the darts um, to enable them to fit uh, my bust area. Barbara's a little bit um, higher busted than I am, so it does actually fit me uh, better than it does fit Barbara. And I added some darts around the neck area, and because I love buttons, I just added some around the neck. And it is rather boring being grey, but it goes with absolutely anything, so it's been very useful, and I've worn it absolutely to death. This fabric has gone really bobbly, uh, but I have worn it quite a lot, so I don't blame it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to it like it's a person and I absolutely love these cuffs on the cocoa top um, and I've added some little buttons there um, just to match um, and even though that I've changed it so much I would like to make another cocoa top that sticks more to the pattern um, I know that um, Tilly's done some a different type of I can't remember what they call it like a, a neck that sort of stands up um, around the cocoa top as well for sort of a more wintry uh, wear so I'd hope to do that in the future so thanks to Georgina I'd like to present my cocoa top as my blast from the past 
from the magic of technology, Barbara will disappear again. So next I'm going to talk about my gadget. This week, because I've done a lot more sort of embroidery, I've lost it, there we go. <laughs> I've wanted to show you my needle threader. So this is how it comes in a little box. And then you get some instructions that I've never actually read because they showed me on uh, one of the stands at the quilt show, I think it was. The, um, there's bits of thread stuck to this. <laughs> it was at the Festival of Quilts, I think I got this one. And it just enables you to thread your needle. So you pop the needle down into here with the eye going into the hole. You put, place your thread over this area and then you push the little lever and it pushes, if you can see the little bit of metal sticking out, it pushes your thread through and then you can pull that out and pull your needle out and it'll be threaded. There's one side for thicker needles, one side for thinner needles and this is really useful because I hate threading needles, <laughs> especially if it's really thin thread. So that was ideal and it comes in this little box and you can put, um, there's a little bung there where you can put some needles um, to store so you can carry that around with you. So I'm really pleased I got that. I, I don't know whether it was five or 10 pounds, but it's had so much more use than five or 10 pounds worth. So I'm really glad I got that one. So that's my gadget for this week. And let me know if you've got that gadget too and whether you like it, it'll be interesting to see. Um, and next, I have confessions. Oh, God. I have to have a drink of tea before I start. There's not actually that much, it's just quite expensive. <laughs> so, as I mentioned earlier, and you probably had no clue what I was talking about, <laughs> but I was speaking about the higher, higher. Um, sharps interchangeables so I bought one set on the before the last episode and I showed you those I think um, I started using them on my Gainham shawl and because I loved them so much I thought I need some of these and also um, Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Craft said that she really loved them too so I felt like even though I'd only tried one set I knew she knew what she was talking about so I needed some <laughs> So I bought a set! <laughs> so you can get um, sets of large or small needles. I bought the small nut needles which ranges from, I shall tell you because I can't remember, I think it's 2.75 needles up to 5mm needles. So you get a set like this and they are absolutely gorgeous. This space here I've I've placed them carefully to put my set that I bought extra for my game, I'm sure, and they're all in order because I like things to be like that. <laughs> and you get a little Velcro bit that just protects your needles nicely and there are extra pockets at the front along here um, that you can put extra needles in as well, which I think is rather lovely. I'll put that nice and straight. There's a little pocket across the top which you can put bits and bobs in and then I've put in the back pocket all my cables which are still in the little plastic bags um, and I had a needle gauge with it as well so there's um, some of the cables so they're a lovely interchangeable set so if you buy the larger size needles I think the, the cables are slightly larger to fit into them so if you you can get um, a converting mechanism which screws in um, from the larger needles into the smaller cables if you'd like. I think that's the way around. I may be wrong because I've only really just bought this set. But it, this bag is really cute. I love sort of blue green so that's perfect and I'm so glad I bought this. I keep knitting a little bit more on my Gainham shawl and I think definitely glad I've bought these needles. Because, because they are sharps I feel that I can do sort of slip slip knit and knit two together much easier because they're nice and sharp can't beat sharp needles. <laughs> so I'm so glad I've made this investment. I'm not buying any more needles for a little while. <laughs> so I'm really pleased with those. I also, I went up into Norwich City to have a look at some shops. I think actually it was because I had my eyes tested. I'll be having some new glasses next week so you won't be, she won't be recognise me. It's a bit like Superman. <laughs> So I've gone up to the city and I found that one of the yarn shops was closing down, which was really sad. But then they had a sale on some yarn. And I 
found these. <laughs> this is one of my most favourite colours. So it's a beautiful teal. And the yarn is scrumptious. Um, and it's in a sport weight yarn. And it is, a, it's four ply sport superwash scrumptious. And it's 45% silk and 55% superwash merino. Mmm. So squishy, and I thought that would be ideal for a nice um, sort of wintry shawl. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. And I know I will use it. Oh, God, I can't stop touching it. I will stop it now. <laughs> it actually goes really well with my needles. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop being a bit nutty now. And then I was looking on Instagram... And Diane from Peggy May Yarns put this picture up of some yarn that's one of a kind. And I just thought, I have to have this yarn. <laughs> so, you guys that have seen it and just were a little bit late, I'm sorry I bought it. <laughs> so it's a gorgeous mix of sort of purples and greens um, on a lovely Polworth base. So I'll show you Diane's card. She's Peggy May Yarn. She's got a website rather than being on Etsy. And she's got some lovely bits and bobs there. She also is doing some mini skeins that I might have purchased um, August's set from. <laughs> but obviously it's not come yet, so I don't get it, it doesn't get included in this set of confessions. <laughs> so that's really lovely. So because it's Polworth, it's not quite as soft as Merino, obviously, but that'll be lovely for some socks. Absolutely gorgeous. So there we go. That's my confessions for this episode. <laughs> And I also had a lovely message from Teresa, who's Teresa Shingler Knits on Etsy. And she also uh, designs patterns as well as, as dyeing her own yarn. And she sent a lovely, lovely prize for you guys. Um, that will be a prize for the summer sock along um, that's running right now. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful sort of greens. Let me pull this label out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. It's a really high twist blue faced, yeah, I can't speak. Blue faced Leicester yarn. And it's got some gorgeous green and sort of autumny tones in there. And I shall show you. This is her sort of logo. And it's Teresa Shingler Knits. And it says that on her um, yarn as well. And she's on Etsy. So she's not only given us a lovely skein of yarn to give away, but also on this card is a code to get yourself some a, a free pattern of the Crescent socks that she's designed. And I will pop a photograph of the pattern here. So thank you so much, Teresa, for that. That's really lovely. And it's, it's got a lovely, really nice quality card as well, which sounds might sound strange to some of you, but I love my stationery as well. <laughs> and not only that, Teresa sent me a lovely skein for me too. And this is gorgeous. So it's got some pinks and greens in there. And this colourway is called Teasel Bloom. I forgot to tell you the colourway uh, that she sent for you guys as well. So this is on the same base. This is the Blue Face Leicester. And I'll just give you a better look at that. It's a lovely high twist yarn. I think you cannot beat a really nice high twist. Absolutely love it. So the one that she's given for you guys to win is a morning of pale spring. Oh, isn't that lovely? There we go. I'll show you that one again. Really lovely. So, you could be winning uh, one of Teresa's lovely hand dyed yarns and a sock pattern. And I thought I'd tell you what the other prizes for the summer sock along will be too, because I, d I just didn't know what I was doing last episode. <laughs> so, we have got four prizes now. So, the first of the prizes was a mini skein set that the lovely Kelly sent me from Lakeside Yarn. And I showed you this before, but I'll just give you a quick show again. And this is um, Kelly's card, Lakeside, Lakeside Yarn off Etsy. And I'm with this, I'm going to put these gorgeous little charms, uh, progress keepers, uh, that I bought a set for myself as well, <laughs> from Chapel View Crafts. And if I can show you, there we go. And she's on Etsy too. So those, those could be yours. So that's the, the first of the prizes. 
not first prize, the first of the prizes. So the next one is um, basically I'm going to give away another sock size bag of, of mine. I, what I'll do is, as I normally do, I'll give you a choice of what sort of fabrics you like. Um, because I, just don't, I don't think it's, you might not like the fabric that I'll just choose randomly. So it's nicer to give you a bit of a personal choice. The third of the prizes is the lovely sock set designed by Lou Lee. So it's a set of sock designs, uh, patterns that include uh, a sort of vanilla sock that uh, Lee's designed, a, a type of a ribbed, one with a lacy pattern and also the ankle socks with ventilation that I showed you earlier. So that's a lovely sock set. So we've got one of those to give away. And also the one I've just showed you from the lovely Teresa. So that's four prizes in total. So you could win any of those. Uh, like I normally do, I'll choose uh, the winners using a number, random number generator. I can't speak now. I've been talking too long. I have to have a drink. <laughs> like I said, I use the random number generator to, to choose prizes. So it could be you. <laughs> We've had uh, quite a few finished objects already. They're quite qu quite quick to knit these um, sort of summer shorty socks, so um, they're not too hard to knit. So come and come and join in. So lastly, we've got Ask Me Anything. So I've got a few questions uh, from a few people that popped questions in the Ask Me Anything thread on Ravelry. So if you've got anything to say for the next episode, just have a look on the Ravelry group on the Ask Me Anything thread and pop your questions in there, and I'll answer them on the podcast. So the first question I've got to ask answer is from the lovely Jo, who's from my hometown, I know from school. And she says, what exactly does blocking do and how exactly do I do it? So, Jo, it's difficult to explain, I suppose, but it basically enables you to make your knitted garment go to the shape that you want it and also it neatens up your stitches so you might have an uneven tension across um, your panel of knitting and once you've blocked it it should all open out so when I block things I soak my knitted item in either some liquid wool wash or some of those lovely um, sock soaps um, that you carefully rub onto your garment and I leave it to soak for about 20 minutes or so then once it's soaked, I take it out and ca carefully squish the water out of it. And then I roll the garment in a towel or socks or whatever and squeeze out a lot of the excess water. And then I've got some blocking mats, which are basically their sort of foam DIY mats that I got from a DIY store, which is they worked out cheaper. <laughs> but we won't go into that right now. Um, so... I can I then spread out my garment over the foam uh, pads and then I pin it into place and I can either use uh, blocking wires and T-pins and I've got some of those um, blocking strips that I showed you on the last episode um, but you don't have to use those um, blocking mats um, I think you can use a towel really on the carpet but you then damage your T-pins a little bit putting it into the carpet but that's what I used to do before I had blocking mats. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Jo. So a similar question I had from Kathy on the Ask Me Anything thread too. And she said, how do you block a huge shawl like the starting point shawl? So if you haven't seen um, the starting point shawl by Hoki Locatelli, you won't know that it's absolutely, it's basically a strip um, of a shawl which is really really long so you need quite a large area to block this um, block it out so if you're going to if you haven't got blocking mats long enough what I do is like I mentioned before is if you put um, after you've wrung out your garment if you put a towel onto onto a carpeted area and then you can lay your shawl out and pin it th in through the towel into the carpet which probably blunts your tea pins to be honest but it's it's the only solution that I found when I didn't have enough space on my blocking mats um, it as long as your garment isn't too sopping wet I mean it won't be because you've rolled it in a towel to get most of the moisture off it and then laid it out on a drier towel that should be that should be enough so I hope that helps um, if you haven't 
got enough T-pins, it might help if you actually, you can lay it over a washing line as well. And it, the areas that you want to sort of drag down, like on a point, if you put some pegs on there, it should sort of drag your garment down. So that's another option as well. Um, but it all depends what the weather's like where you live. And if you're in the UK, it's not particularly good. So I don't tend to leave things on the sh on the washing line for very long. Um, because I think when you're blocking something out, I, I leave it until it's really dry, rather than just a few hours like I normally leave the washing on the line. So I hope that answers your question, Cathy. So lastly, the lovely Sylvia asked me what I had on the shelves behind me. So I'm going to take the camera and go a little bit closer and then describe all the different things up up closer. So here we are, here's my little crafty corner. I'm going to start with these two little pieces of patchwork that I've got hanging up here. Those are the ones I actually did the very first when I started doing patchwork. Um, and I've got them hung using these cute little clips that I got from Ikea. They're very handy, they're supposed to be for curtains I think. So I did these two pieces of patchwork um, with my first quilting teacher, uh, who was called Tricia, I think I've mentioned her before, um, and I really enjoyed making these pieces and they're, they're my blues, my favourite colours. <laughs> so I'm really glad that I can put those up somewhere rather than just having them as potholders or something. So next I've got my little model of Newt Scamander who's got his little picket in his arms, very cute. I think I'd seen him on um, Katie's podcast on Inside Number 23 and just could not resist, I needed to have him. <laughs> so next I've got my little hare here. He's got some lovely dungarees and a cute little hat on. I made him um, as part of a, a sew-along in my local quilt group. Um, and he's got cute little legs. He's a Tilda pattern and he came from this book here, Crafting Springtime Gifts. And I also made, I'm trying not to make you feel sick with my camera movements, these two sheep that I've got here. So they're made out of a really strange um, sort of sheep-like fabric that I actually picked up from my mum and dad's living room. <laughs> My mum had got these cushions with this fabric on and I said they would be fantastic sheep. So mum let me cut them up and make them into sheep. <laughs> so there's a little, there's two versions of them, one with blue stitching and one with pink stitching around the heart. And I'm really pleased I made those. I might make some more. So this is a cute little meerkat that Tilly Trout made me. She gave it me and thanks for me lending her my um, spinning wheel, which was lovely of her. And then you might have seen these before. This is one of the flowers that um, I made for the buttonholes for the wedding. And that's the one that Adam wore on the wedding day. It's a little bit battered now, but there we go. <laughs> and you can just see I've got, um, it's Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizard Wizardry. Um, third year potions box there. Very cute. <laughs> And here's my cats that I've made a little while ago. I love the little kitten ones here. Really, really cute. I, I think I might make some more. I did originally want to make them into pin cushions, but I couldn't bear putting pins in them. <laughs> they're just so cute. And they're made out of all Tilda fabrics as well, my favourite. This is the book where I got the pattern for, for the cats. And you can see how I changed the face expressions because I thought they looked a little bit evil in this book. <laughs> um, but this, it's, and also well, the way that the tail's attached, I changed as well. But it's a lovely sort of base pattern. And the, you can see how cute the kittens are, even with the evil faces. So if we go up here, we can see my lovely little owl. <laughs> so we bought this as part of the wedding sort of prep. And he sat on our post box for our sort of wedding cards. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. cute. It's like owl post. It's lovely. <laughs> so he was from um, a little shop that's in Aylsham, I think. And they sell all the little bits and bobs. And I just saw him and he's gorgeous. He's got real feathers, but this is just like um, a fluffy toy sort of fabric. But he's very cute. So he's my headwig. <laughs> And then if I go across, you can see some embroidery that I'd done. Um, this is a pattern that I'd got from the Festival of Quilts. And I can't quite remember the name of the lady who designed it, but I will put it um, 
underneath the video so you can or on the screen so you can see and look it up um, I don't know why I can't remember because normally I can remember this lady's name I'm just having a brain freeze at the moment <laughs> and then you can see my lovely yarns that I've got um, in the background so these these sort of um, poles are actually from Ikea and made for kitchen appliances or not appliances but hanging up spoons and things but they're great for hanging up yarn as well <laughs> And I've just got, oh, there's one of my knitting bags there with some bunting on the top and some pom-poms because you can always need a pom-pom. Good fun. And then I have showed you this basket before. Um, this I made on a course. Um, I think Oh, it was Margaret. My friend Margaret had done the course and it was to do with um, doing free motion on some um, basically very thick um, iron-on violin with some lovely bits and bobs fabrics on the top. So that was really fun. And then I might as well show you my uh, old vintage Jones sewing machine that I've I've got here. So this is one of my sewing machines. I This is actually one I don't use very often, but it looks really gorgeous. <laughs> so this sewing machine was Adam's mum's machine. And she just wanted to get rid of it. And I said, you know, you're not. I'll have it and look after it. <laughs> but he looks so cute. I really want to make a cover for it because the original cover was a bit tatty. Um, so I've taken it off. But it would be nice to keep the dust off it a little bit. And then I've got some books in the shelf above. Um, and in this area, I've got a little seahorse. I bought this from a, um, a craft fair where my local quilt group was selling things. And this was made by my lovely friend, um, Mary. Um, and it used to smell of lavender, but it doesn't smell so much of lavender now. It's been there a little while. And then you can see how I've tucked some bits of yarn at the top there. <laughs> and you can see some of the books that I've got on this shelf. Um, you can see how I've read Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and I've got one of the new Trudy Canavan books um, which I haven't got around to reading yet but most of these are craft related. <laughs> um, I think you can, I, one of the books I really want to get back into is getting the old sewing bee book and make some trousers out of there which I will get onto one day. I'll perhaps go through these books a little bit better another time. Uh, you can see that I've got a jug here that I used to fill my iron up actually, <laughs> water that I hand painted at one of those um, pottery painting barns, which was great fun. And yeah, I can just turn it around so you can see the other side. There's just some grass on the other side. That was great fun to paint uh, with a dragonfly on. And then I've got a basket full of lovely yarn, mostly mini skeins, and then a lovely cross stitch, which my friends um, Sarah and Les uh, Leslie, Lindsay, um, made for me which was really lovely so that's my little tour of the behind me in the craft room um, I'll perhaps give you a tour of all my sewing machines next time and tell you a little bit about them um, but that's all that's the end of the tour so I just wanted to mention that I've got a shop update coming on the 4th of August so you've got a couple of weeks till then uh, but keep an eye on the shop I'm putting stitch markers uh, on pro well not stitch markers progress keepers on there all the time um, but I don't have a shop update with the bags on until the 4th of August so have a look I also wanted to start doing my doodler from Stephen West now I showed you these before I chose these colors to do the doodler and if you haven't done, haven't seen the doodle, I'll pop a picture in here. So I want to do the two main colours will be these two with this dark purple as the top edge and the little streaks between the panels. So I think that's going to be lovely. But I was wondering if any of you guys wanted to knit it along with me. Um, if you're interested in doing a knit along, um, I was going to call it the doodle along. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure how many people would fancy doing it. So put a comment in the uh, Ravelry group thread um, for this episode if you, if you think you would be interested. And we can decide whether there's enough people to do it. I know that there's a couple of people um, that are interested. I just wanted to see if there's a few more of you guys that might knit along as well. Uh, the Doodler is such an interesting pattern. It's Stephen West patterns, uh, just so interesting to knit. I can't wait to, to cast on another one. So I think that's everything for today. Thanks so much for joining me, especially if you haven't watched before. Um, I hope to see you again in the next episode. I hope you have a lovely, happy crafting for a few weeks. Until next time, bye!